Hello and welcome back to Zim Explorer. I am Dr. Abstract and in this Zim Explorer we're going to take a look at shaders again. So this is the third Explorer on shaders. Let's go to the Zim site at zimjs.com and have a look. All right, shaders are available here, but just in case this isn't here when you come to the site, you can probably get to it from up here. Here we seem to be kind of consistent with this is the new features link. And if we're on 017 or 018, you can probably find 016. That's where shaders are introduced right here. Or under examples, and you can find shaders there like so. So here's our shaders. We've done a couple explorers. Uh, the first one was just on basic how to, how to make a shader and what is a fragment shader versus a, a vertex shader. Although we haven't really seen the vertex shaders, that's what this explorer is about. We're going to take a look at vertex shaders as well as a fragment shader and bringing in an image all to work with this guy right there, a checkerboard. So we're taking a look at this example where we've got a fragment shader and here we're using uniforms to determine how many of these things we're showing. Oh, zero of them. Okay. And so we'll see how that is. Now that comes from uh, the following, which is an article in the Medium by David Banks on three ways to make a checkerboard. So this was how we learned actually about shaders was this article right here. So thank you very much. We've also taken parts of the template code that are here, merged it with parts of uh, the uh, general uh, Mozilla uh, shader code to help bring in the template into or bring in shaders to Zim. So this stuff right here, which is to reduce the distracting code, uh, it's structured with this. This stuff has all been abstracted to Zim, so you don't need to do all of this as part of the you know, 100 to 200 lines of code. All right, so there's using uh, the fragment shader, using the vertex shader, and it describes how this is working with some diagrams. So that might be good for you to come in here and have a read through this as well. This is all, what do they call it? Um, OpenGL 1. So just beware that this is OpenGL 1. We're on now OpenGL 4, I think. Uh, this will all still work for the most part, but there are some things that, uh, that don't. Uh, yeah, so we, we actually told Zim to use OpenGL 1 in the, as a style, like um, in, in the code. So we'll, we'll see that. But isn't that nice? It's kind of uh, lots of nice diagrams here. So you're welcome to come in and have a read through how this was created. This is the problem of it being flipped in the wrong size maybe. And so how they reflipped it. Uh, here's an image and how to go from blurry to not blurry. All right, good. And those are the three different ways. Let's close this down. F11. And actually come in and see this. Close that one too. Close that one. And here's the code for our checkerboard. This first one is this one right here. Open in browser. Now we're seeing it locally. Is the fragment shader. So fragment shader is what changes the color of the pixels. A vertex shader handles <coughs> where the triangles are. So with the vertex shader, we're actually making triangles in like a little, uh, we're making a white thing out of two triangles, then we're making a black thing out of two more triangles, and we're making a white thing out of two triangles. And so we're using the triangles to create this as opposed to, oh, sorry, but that's in the vertex. This is the fragment one. In the fragment one, we have just two triangles, a big triangle here and a big triangle there. And we've kind of made it so you don't have to worry about that anymore, that you can just take an X and Y, or a UV, and take an X and Y right across this whole thing as a, a rectangle. And it just makes it easier for us because we're used to that on a canvas. So uh, that's how the fragment shader is working. But uh, we're also going to see how to bring in an image, like a little image, and I can't remember if it repeats that image. But yeah, we have a little checkerboard made out of a black and white thing 
It might, it might be like this big. Oh, and it's really, really small. So a little puny, it's just like a one pixel image, or sorry, a four pixel image. And then we're uh, zooming in on that and repeating it, maybe, I guess. We must be repeating it in a certain way. Yeah, we're repeating that as a tile, tiling that. All right, let's dig into the code then. Uh, in this one, we have uniforms operating. On the other ones, I don't think we did uniforms. So if you control U to see the code here, then you'll end up seeing this code. Or you can grab that code in other ways too. We have a label saying there's a fragment shader. Remember we're in Zim016 here. The icon stuff is just because we have an icon right there. That's the Zim icon. There's our title that we just said, the label fragment shader. We also will have some other stuff in here. So this is the checkerboard. How did I get down to the footer? Oh, I think it was by accident. Uh, we're in a fit mode. There's our label. We are now making our fragment shader. So in the past two explorers, we've been working in fragment shaders. So that is uh, will be the same. And here we've got a uniform happening, but there's our shader right there, 500 by 500. Passing in the fragment code there. We'll go through the fragment code in just a sec. There's our uniforms we're passing in. And we're also making this not dynamic. We're not, we're not animating this shader, so we should turn dynamic false. But that does mean when we update something, for instance, there we are updating the uniforms with the steppers that we have to do the board.update. Otherwise, we won't see the update. If we took these guys off like that, we wouldn't need the board.update. And a board.update will see if the board's on the stage, it will also update your stage. So that updates the stage as well. Okay, so coming back up, the fragments. Well, let's see. We've got the format that is being used by Shader Toy there, where we're bringing in frag, or we're sending out frag color. We're bringing in frag coordinates. We're using that frag coordinates times how many we want. So counts is here. It's eight by eight at the moment. So it's starting off eight by eight, but counts A, which will be the first part of uh, the counts, and parts B are being set by the stepper, uh, both of them. So we're setting, in other words, we didn't really need two things here. If we, uh, we could if we wanted to have separate values, but we only have one stepper and we're keeping our checkerboard symmetrical diagonally, I guess. So uh, same number of rows and columns. If we wanted to though, we could comment out that for instance. So now we won't be changing the Bs and what will that do? So our, if our uniform is counts, we're not updating the second one. Okay, let's see what that does. We refresh here, and now we are only changing the columns here. So that could have been done if we wanted to, but we decided not to go that route. Although that's kind of fun as well. All right, we're updating dynamically both of them the same, and that means we are getting checkerboards of different sizes. Uh, okay, where are they both? The checkerboard itself, hmm, let's see, we're dividing that by, so that will tell us how many we got, does it, or how, how big the things are, or how many, I don't know. The resolution is the width. This is, the frag cord is the how far in the X along, times the count, yeah. And then we're doing the modulus on that, dividing it by two. Remember that uh, we want that to be a float, so that means you need at least two decimal, like two point, or you can put the zero on the end. And that's like the percent sign in JavaScript. And we're deciding on which state that is based on, so a little trick there to uh, do uh, alternating as it goes. And then we're mixing the two colors that we've got, color one, color two, where they come from. 
our two colors are black and white. So we're passing in two colors. They don't have to be black and white. We could say 0.5 here, and then it would have some red in the white. And then it would be a kind of like a darker red along with black, I guess. Or is it white? Yeah, okay, sorry, that's a zero. All the rest are, that's white, so a bunch of ones. Okay, so we are also receiving the, um, the two colors. And that's what we're mixing based on the state. This will be either zero or one, I guess. And so we're getting this color if it's one and that color if it's a zero. Uh, <laughs> something like that, yeah, I think that's it. So that's how we're mixing. That comes in from the shader, the mod and the mixer is the shader uh, language. Okay, open, open shader, open GL, I guess it is open GL. It might be in GLSL itself, but this is open GL best. And you can find, uh, do a search for that and find out where to get all of these commands and read about them. And good luck. That's the whole shader world. We're not really going into that. I'm just kind of telling you all I know based on um, what I learned from that tutorial and also based on some of the things that are coming from looking at various shader toy examples. By the way, here are those three links. So in each of them, you'll, you'll be coming in probably to this one, the checkerboard, uh, just checkerboard. But there's the checkerboard vertex, which is not up on the site as an example. You have to just get to it by putting that in there. So let's go to the vertex one and see how we do it with the vertex. This one is the fragment shader. So I don't think there are really any surprises there exactly. Uh, if you haven't been to the other explorers, oops, you should have gone to the other explorers first. So we have two Zim Explorers, uh, one on basic shaders, and then one on how to bring in shader toy stuff, and also more about shaders. We made a circle in that. And here we're looking at a checkerboard, and we're about to go to this one right here called checkerboard underscore vertex, which I can find right here. So now we're in the checkerboard vertex, and if I open that up in a default browser, here it is. I don't have a stepper here. We just have the checkerboard. This is made with a vertex shader. We also found right here, that's the label for it, that we've set a style and all this style is doing is down here when we make the shader itself, uh, which is where, you see shader anywhere. There it is, new shader. When we make the shader, if we wanted to, we could have put this right inside here. I don't know why we didn't bother actually, because we, we've got the Zim Duo technique already. So here we could have said version, colon, quote, quote, that puts it back to version zero. We did it with a style and then log colon true. We could have said that here, log colon true. I don't know, what do you think? Probably should just do that. Okay, and maybe we'll move this down below here to where we make the shader. Okay, so a logging will output the shaders for us. Remember, we've got two different types of shaders. One is a vertex shader and one's a fragment shader. And what we're doing is we're not making our own vertex shader here. Uh, there is a way that if you want, you can put code into the vertex shader, into the default vertex shader, either after or before what we've got there. And in this case, we're adding code after the existing default vertex shader. So we didn't bother making the whole vertex shader on its own, but you could have done that. So down below, when we make the shader, we're saying, post call. So after we call the shader code, we're adding that code, the after function. So here's the function to add afterwards. When we do specify a function, we're given, that function is given this information, which can be helpful for us. 
So we're going to use that information down here to create, um, to continue on building the vertex shader. Okay, based, uh, like it inserts it inside of the, the vertex shader, but after our call. So there's also a pre-call, and as a matter of fact, when we do an image, we end up, I think, using the pre-call. Otherwise, note that we don't even, we didn't pass in a fragment or a vertex shader here. But if you wanted to do your vertex shader all yourself, you could have passed in vertex and whatever your vertex shader is. Okay, and that could be your own custom vertex right from the ground up and not even bother with the post. Okay, and if you want to do a fragment, then that would go in here like that. And you could do a fragment and a vertex and do some fragment code. Anyway, we don't have that. Okay, if we pop back to the fragment checkerboard, there we are passing the fragment because that parameter happens to be called fragment. And so, I, I mean, that's the parameter called fragment. We could have called it F there and F here, and it would have been the same thing. Okay, but that happens to be the location for the fragment parameter. Whereas back over here, under the vertex, we aren't using locations because we've gone to the Zim Duo technique where we're using the configuration object and specifying the names of the parameters here. That's a feature of Zim. Apparently, that's also a feature of Python where you can specify the parameters by name. It's called property parameters or something. We have that in Zim by passing in a configuration object or regular parameters. We call it the Zim Duo technique. It was created in Zim Duo, the second version of Zim. All right. Uh, okay. Or we could have said all that with styles. You saw how styles worked uh, briefly, you know, there. We could have said style is all of this. And then all that would get applied by style to the shader. All right, that's not what we're really, really here for. What we're really here for is what is going on? How are we making a checkerboard uh, in the vertex shader? So eight by eight, and therefore we're calculating a size based on the width that we've got. Uh, the width must be set somewhere. That's a width and a height, but did we set a width and a height anywhere else in here? Where'd we get this width from? No width there. Size is a width. Do you see a width anywhere? Width height. Icon by. I don't see a width anywhere. Hmm. Cont size equals. Oh, uh, sorry. That's the name of the um, object literal. Darg, 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 darg. Okay, so the width is going to be two divided by the counts at zero. So divided by eight, two eights and two eights. Hmm. Okay. Is that because we're making it out of a triangle and we need two of them? I don't know. That's figuring out a size. We're Dividing two by that. Okay. okay, so we must have some sort of size that is more like zeros in the middle, negative ones at the left, and one is at the right. And we're dividing that amount, which is two, all right? If, if negative one is at the left, zeros in the middle, and one's at the right, then we've got, because uh, I, I believe that's the dimensions of the vertex shader. So negative one at the left, zero in the middle, one at the right. That makes two units. We're dividing those two units by the counts to get the size of each of our rectangles. Oh, do I have to go over this with you guys? <laughs> all right, anyway, it, uh, that's all. Uh, he explains this in the tutorial. So why don't you just go look at that tutorial if you want to actually figure out all of what's going in here. What we're really trying to show you is how we've implemented that so that you can make this in Zim rather than in just uh, WebGL. 
on a canvas. So he's doing a WebGL on a canvas and you'll see that there's a lot of crap that you have to do to make that happen. We've got it here in Zim where we can start operating it on things like sliders and dials and animating and wiggling and dragging things around because it's, it's treated as a bitmap. So that's amazing. So uh, anyway, but to kind of go over this a little bit as much as I know and can fake fakey wakey here, we're looping then across the size there. We're setting some alternating trick to be able to alternate the colors going. This is this is kind of like how to make a checkerboard type tricks that are going on here. Then we're looping through. So we've got an outer loop and an inner loop, rows and columns stuff. We're continuing. So do not add anything. Maybe where there's white, we don't put anything or something. And when there's black, we put something. Okay, so then what have we got? We've got the dimensions. Ah, okay, so now what we're doing is trying to find out where this, where these triangles are going to go. I believe we've got, end up with two triangles. And we're saying the left corner, the right corner, the bottom left corner, and the bottom right corner, or something like that. Uh, so we're keeping track of locations of those. And then we're putting it into the vertex data. Uh, and this is us making triangles, I believe. Looks like three points, yeah. So three points and three points. Two triangles that will make a rectangle. Okay, and we're spreading these points. So we have X, Y points for each triangle and we're making big long vertex data that says what do we want to make with our vertex shader that's it it looks like that ends up passing the vertex data by default so do we have vertex data here yeah so we're adjusting the vertex data so this is a reference to the vertex object vertex data object and we just put some stuff in it <laughs> so I believe you end up with a a default vertex data of nothing, like an array, uh, empty array. And we just push some stuff into that empty array. And that ended up making black and white triangle stuff. There you go. Black triangle stuff and nothing. So if we didn't have white here, we wouldn't see any white. And indeed, if we say red here and view it, then we get this. Red is background. So the white, it's really only black that it was making and it didn't bother doing anything for the, the white triangles, I guess. And we've thrown in a rectangle that happens to be the same size in behind the shader. So this is the backing rectangle. Otherwise, if we didn't do that, we would get orange, this background color. So now we get that's what the vertex shader is making is these black rectangles and it's just sitting on top of the background now oh isn't this a good explorer and we're passing in the width and height it's not updating that's the function that is all this stuff that's how we adjusted the vertex shader to include this vertex data and there we go we turn the logging on what ends up getting made if we turn the logging on, F12 is when we look at the F12, it creates the whole thing for us. So this is the vertex shader. There's the default vertex shader. There's the default fragment shader. This is logging isn't helping us because all of that function that just got put in there, I guess is after dynamically um, adjusting what this is showing. Huh, I wonder if we could make it log that extra stuff that we added and then we would see it all tucked in together, but uh, that's not what the log's doing, so, oh, well, which means the log's kind of useless in this case. <laughs> and just tick it right out. Um, one thing to note, oh, one thing the log does help us see is, I think it does, no, it doesn't even do that. It doesn't tell us that we're using WebGL zero huh. uh, I suppose that must be outside of that perhaps 
we just use it? I can't remember. I thought you had to declare, oh, maybe for WebGL, yeah, I bet you that's it. For WebGL1, you don't declare anything and it's WebGL1. But if we had not said, like if we had, well, let's just check for version two here and turn the log on. I uh, can't remember if that's two or 2.0, 2.0 and then log colon true. We will probably get an error, but uh, maybe it'll try and show us something here. 2.0, yeah. So that's how to declare it right there. You put the version right there, but this is unfortunately giving us an error. Hmm. Maybe it's just the error 2.0 <laughs> sitting in the front there. I swear we could set a version in some way. I don't know what happens with two. Probably the same error, yeah, same error. Uh, let's go to the docs. Oh, how is this for an explorer? So going to the docs here and type in shader. There's the version right there. And so if we come on down in here, boop, 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 lots of examples. Boop, 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 boop. Fragment uniforms vertex. Pre-call and post-call. There's the version. Default. Ah, okay. We have to do a little bit more than that. So the default is pound sign version 300 ES string version to add to the top of the shader would suggest leaving this as default. Use quote quote for lower versions. Higher versions probably will work using the pound sign. So uh, anyway, so anything lower than this default version of three. So that's their version, that's the version three. Just use quote quotes for. All right, well, anyway, I'm not sure that helped us out any, but uh, log true version quote, quote is that. I was wondering why when we logged it, we didn't see the version in it. And I, I'm still not sure, but it doesn't matter too much, I don't think. All right, there, that's it. That's the checkerboard via the vertex shader. And the last one is the checkerboard with an image. So that looks like here. Open a default browser. And the only difference really is that it's pink. And there is our image 8 by 8 shader with an image. This one as well, we had a problem with the version. And here in this shader, we got a shader that does not use the Zim Duo technique. So although the parameter for the version is not too far from here, but whatever, we'll leave it in as a style version. So couldn't get this to work in OpenGL 3 either, uh, which is too bad because it would have been nice to figure out how to get an image in. So here we've got both a vertex and a fragment shader code that we're passing in. So when we make our shader, we're passing in the fragment code. This is for uniforms. We don't have any uniforms. And then the vertex code. We're hardly ever using the vertex code. So we put the uniforms. It would have been nice maybe to tuck these things together. But we use these four things quite a lot. And hardly ever the vertex code. So we just kind of said, all right, let's put the uniforms in before the vertex. OK, we're also sticking some code before rather than after. So the next one after this is the after. And then I can't remember, maybe it's maybe it's then the version, I'm not sure. Okay, so we're putting some code before. Here's the code to put before. We're actually loading in the picture as a texture image element to our shader code. And we're setting how that wraps. So I can't remember where that gets put, if that's probably into the fragment, it gets inserted into the fragment. If we set the reports or whatever, the log on true, or maybe the log was the next thing there, but if we set the log on, then we um, might see, perhaps this gets stuck in the log. Should we log it and see? Comma log, colon true, refresh here. 
with 12. There's our vertex, nothing about an image, and there's our uh, fragment shader, nothing about an image. So it looks like the log isn't logging before and after. That's dynamically added after we log. Uh, we can look into that. It may be that the next time you come, I'm not sure how easy or hard that is to do or if it's possible. But I'm going to go take a look at that and see if we can log what we're adding before or after. So that might change by the time you watch this. Not sure. And... Let's turn the log off and see what we're doing. We're passing in a vertex shader that looks to me like it's pretty well the default vertex shader. I'm not sure. And this shader is pretty normal too, but ah, so texture comes from uh, when the texture comes into this. So if the texture is coming in, it says that it's flipped and it's different coordinates. That's all explained out in that blog, uh, or the, the, not a blog, what do they call it? It's an article or whatever on Medium. And that's this location. All right, so they really talk, uh, they do a nice job of showing what flip means and why we're changing it uh, here. So we're taking an image and this is the code that we're doing before then. So let's see what we're doing. We're bringing in a new pick. This is the board. And there's what the image looks like. It's really small. Oh, okay. That's not exactly what I thought it looked like. It is actually the checkerboard or a chessboard. <laughs> okay, but just a one pixel one. So I'm going to zoom out of this. How do you zoom out? Okay. There it is. It's just a one by one pixel, uh, or sorry, it's a one pixel checkerboard. That's the image. So we're running to expand that bigger. So we do some stuff on the GL. This before will receive the WebGL object, which is GL and GL dot create texture. We're then binding it to whatever two uh, D texture. I'm not sure some text parameters. So this is how we're wrapping it and clamping it. Blah. Get text 2D, blah, and passing all that in there. Ah, oh, nice stuff, huh? It's like, oh my God. So I don't know really what the heck is going on there. It's just a way that we're grabbing a texture. And we're sticking that in beforehand. And so where is our texture? Where do we get it, texture? I think it goes into there then. We're passing our normalized coordinates in there. So we have some coordinates that we've made and we've said, yeah, put the texture, let's, let's output as its GL frag color. Let's output, that's the default output. Note that we're not, we didn't even declare that anywhere. In WebGL one, that was how it was done. The output was always GL underscore frag color. And the input was always gl underscore frag uh, chords. We have told it that we got the frag chords from the vertex position. I think that was default as well. We said that that's it, but I think it gets stuck in that. I'm not sure. So those are the like gl frag chords basically, and brought that in as a um, an attribute that gets passed from here to here. So there is, uh, it's a varying, it's called. <laughs> nice, huh? Uh, it's not a uniform. So this is when you get information coming from up above. So the frag chords is getting passed into here from this side, frag chords is the vertex position. I think that gets populated automatically. And then our GL position is what is that is that setting i don't know not sure so that it has something to do with um the vertex shader okay uh there you go blah, 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 blah. and that will get our texture so if we didn't have that we wouldn't 
you can see that little image. I don't know what scaled it. Maybe this said scale it. The coordinates looks like it from 0.5 to negative 0.5. That's going to flip it in some way. And like I said, you can read about that in this blog if you're interested in knowing what happens there. I'm not really interested in knowing what happens because uh, I don't think I'm going to... Well, maybe one day I need to bring in an image and use that image, say the colors of the image, and use the shader to, say, warp the image. So that would be really good to know how to do. I don't know if you've seen ones where you, you've got an image and you're warping it, like you're rippling it, or... That's what shaders are good for, for controlling each pixel and moving it. A displacement map. So if you heard that term, a displacement map. And it would be nice if we could use a shader to displace an image, at which point this might be a route to try and get the image in. And then you could use shader code that already exists to warp that image in here. But this is WebGL 1. That's probably done. Like, I mean, that's famous. I'm sure that you got lots of examples of Web WebGL 1 warping things. So you're probably good to go. But it would have been nice if we could have you know, got it working in uh, WebGL 3 as well, just in case. One route to go, and maybe this is sort of the future for us, is we would take a look at uh, the shader local here so I can't access the file but uh, we would look at the shaders for instance in here go to shader toy and they have a way of bringing in images even though that says image there if you press on these things like this channel let's make this channel a picture see something that looks like a picture textures okay cube maps volumes videos so you can bring in a video and you can apply shaders to the this set of videos right here here's a set of textures i don't know what happens if i press on one of these things there it is but do i have to re nothing showed up there so maybe you have to then call that channel right there in this code somehow so if we figured out how that's done, if we saw somebody else warping a picture, it's possible that we could look at this code and use the code that they're using to warp the picture in here, but make it reference the texture that we created here. And then we're kind of good to go, aside from the fact that here is uh, WebGL 3 or more, I think that they're, they might be on 4, but WebGL 3 at least in here. So some of the things that they're doing here to warp the things, or whatever, might not work in here because we're specifying WebGL 1. Okay, so just watch out for that. That might be something that we should try and do and provide an example one day how to warp images and maybe possibly how to get images coming in better in WebGL 3. Okay. Hey, well, that's what Explorers are about, is to talk about these things. We go through the code of stuff. I am Dr. Abstract. Um, hopefully that was fun for you. I don't know. I think the other two Explorers were a little bit more fun, where we were showing uh, doing more. But I thought it would be important to talk about the different types so the, the fragment shader the vertex shader uh, normally we're doing fragment shaders this has some vertex shader stuff and also we saw how to bring in an image all the best to you then i am dr abstract and this has been a zim explorer come and visit us at zimjs.com slash forum or zimjs.com slash discord we'd love to see you there all the best